Welcome to Gaw TV. Oh, yes, my friends, that's a hashtag. Gaw TV. Your grown ass women are here. Myself, Lisa Marie Barron, and the beautiful Mickey James. We're all here on our favorite day of the week to spend with all of you guys. Now, before we begin, we want to make sure that you like this video. Give it a thumbs up, please. Make sure, make certain, make absolutely certain you are subscribed to our channel here on Gaw TV. And of course, click that bell icon to enable notifications so you never miss a future episode. How are we feeling, ladies? Happy Wednesday. Happy, Happy Wednesday. Wednesday. Woohoo! Yeah. I jingle. Oh, you're good. I, I like that like necklace. It. Well, I thanks. I didn't realize I jingled until I did this. <laughs> <laughs> it, is, it is the holidays. I've, I've tried to decorate. I've got my, my little baby Christmas tree. That my husband said looks like a toilet brush. <laughs> I can't. So excited about it. Now you can't unsee it, right? Right, exactly. <laughs> exactly. He said, yeah. it's, a, it's a bold brush. I'm like, no, it's a Christmas tree. That's a terrible Alan impression. Bold brush. I think it's so cute. Brush. It's girly. I decorate it myself. Okay. There's a freaking star oh. on the top. Yeah. Oh. Anyway, guess we'll oh. get into it. Yeah. Anyway, uh, quick shout out to our patrons of patreon.com slash TV. We are filming new content today and throughout the week for our fabulous patrons, including our top tier who get signed 8 by 10s from us. Last month we did that. We're doing it again this month because we know that you guys loved it. And there's more perks coming to patreon.com slash TV. Also, ladies, we want to say a huge thank you to Leonard and Remy, who are the winners of our Mick Foley auction. Mickey, we, we got this one good this time. We raised a lot of money for this amazing cause, christmasmagic.org. I'm so excited. We raised $1,000. We raised $1,000 to get all these kids these toys. So we're going to send that over to christmasmagic.org. And if you guys want to, you can still go to christmasmagic.org. You can still donate. You can go see the kids' Amazon wish list and personally buy them a toy from yourself. So... It's really amazing, and we love that Mick does this every single year and plays Santa, he does, writes yeah. letters. Yeah. <gasps> Did I tell you guys? What? Oh, my God. We're going to have to – hold on. Remember I told you what he did, what Santa did? Yes, for Donovan. Let me show you what I just picked up that was shipped to my mom's house <gasps> for this year. Oh, my God. Another Is that one? another one? Another one from, from Santa, Santa himself. Old Saint yeah. Nick. I mean Saint Nick. Saint Nick yes. from Santa's Candy Castle. Oh my it's god! In Santa Claus, Indiana. I didn't know if you know that. He made the nice list again, you guys. Yay, Donovan! Yay. You did it. And look, and remember when, he, when Mick told us he was doing calligraphy and he wrote all these himself? The wacky yeah. old. Look, this is three pages long, this thing. Sorry, wow. I'm going on a whole, like, little tangent about No, this. it's we a great tangent. It. Oh, my God, we love, oh, my God. Three that pages? Well, three freaking pages. How long do you think it took him to do this? A long damn time? Oh, my God. At least an hour, for sure, that he At just least. dedicated his life to writing this letter to my son for Christmas. And I, I just love got that. Him. Even more reason, you guys, to check this out. Christmasmagic.org, of course, we're putting it in the description as well. And all of your fabulous donations. Thank you, Remy. Thank you, Leonard. We should say merci, Remy. Merci beaucoup. Merci. Yes. And, uh, and Leonard, of course, thank you guys so much because it's, it's one thing to, to, you know, to buy from our stores and support us, support the show. We so appreciate that. But this is going to an amazing cause, handpicked by Mick Foley himself. So yay for that. Thank you, everybody. Yay. So, so wonderful. Um, and speaking of giving and giving back, it's that time of year. Uh, Mickey, you are doing some wonderful things on your Instagram as well for hashtag Giving Tuesday. Well, yes. we're doing it, and I appreciate you guys so much because we're kind of doing it together because we promised that we would send them and assign eight by 10 from all of us here. And you guys were going to help me pick the winner of the Giving Tuesday challenge um, that I was doing with Operation Underground Rescue. Um, <clears throat> sorry, a frog jumped in my throat. <laughs> I literally jumped inside of it and just hung out back here. I'll try that again. I thought you were. I thought you were getting all choked up with emotion, girl. So did I. I did too. I did too. <laughs> so anyway, we, um, I was doing this challenge with Operation Underground Railroad, which is O U R Rescue dot org. Uh, 
backslash not for sale because they had that book, which I couldn't talk about, which was the surprise that was only available for 24 hours, the not for sale book, um, which is the special um, gift that they were throwing in with this bag. And then we're obviously going to send them the eight by 10. Um, So we've decided that the winner is Landalux here, Alan Landalux. And I know I feel like he's from, where is he? There's so many comments and I even- I know. There he is. Landela, oh. There he is. Alan. What does it say? Alan, Alan, what's it say, Mickey? What's his Um, comment? He said, his comment was, and then he went and did the challenge. Um, His comment was, now why am I, how do you work this dang fangled thing? (laughs) Sorry guys, I lost it. Here it is. He goes, it will be done. Cool, cool emoji mm-hmm. with a thumb up. Because at one time I was the railroad. So I was like, oh, that's very touching. Cause I think, you know, when we talk about like human trafficking and we talk about child abuse and, and neglect and all of these things, I think that it hits a lot of more people a lot closer to home than we realize, you know, yeah, absolutely. even when in my, you know, I was, I work with child help too. And they were doing a thing for giving Tuesday because giving Tuesday really is all about like giving back to your favorite charity. And that's why I was like really open to what, you're passionate about because I think that's when you feel the most fulfilled when you're giving in those moments is like right giving back to something that you're really really passionate about but um anyway yeah but like child abuse is crazy and like it's like one in five children are affected so then I even think of like Donovan's classroom it's got 13 kids in it so that means like in the breakdown of them like two of those kids in that classroom are being abused when you look at it in that number structure and you just don't even realize it yeah, it's, it's horrifying always- to think about. But Mickey, we, we want to say cheers to you. You should be our, our gall of the week because I have to tell you, since we started <laughs> the show, you've, you've brought so many fabulous charities to our attention. You so have, thank you for you that. Mickey. Thank you to thank Alan you. for being the winner of the hashtag Giving Tuesday, which Giving Tuesday is a hashtag every damn Tuesday, you guys. So make sure that you're doing your part. And especially during the holiday seasons, what can you do? I'll tell you, you can go to our rescue.org you can also go to christmasmagic.org and make any sort of donation that you can we'd so appreciate it mm-hmm. um and speaking of appreciating things uh as we started lisa i want to talk to you about two things we always ask who are you wearing what are you drinking but you kind of are doing a double whammy because i want to know about your outfit and what's going on behind you that you, you have a mannequin just like i do it did you name her <laughs> i have not i named mine miranda you gotta name her right now oh my gosh oh my gosh um, Ramona! Huh? <laughs> what should I, what should I name her? Rona. What is it? Oh, Rona? Miss Rona? No, Ramona! Miss Rona. Oh, I named it Miss Rona. Ramona. Why <laughs> Ramona? She's Jeremy. I don't know. It's the name of a housewife, but it's just a funny sounding a mannequin name. Like, oh, this is just okay. Ramona. Like, I don't Miss know. Miss Ramona. 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 <laughs> so are we going with me first? Yeah, you, and then we'll, we'll have Ramona go second, because she's, <laughs> well, she's new. I, what am I drinking? What am I wearing? I was this yeah. at. Oh, boy, already. Oh, Woo-hoo. boy. I am drinking um, uh, red wine. Um, I'm embarrassed to, uh, to sh- the show the brand, but I got it two for, two for, two like for, Mickey two loves, for. but two for, two for eight bucks. Yes, um, and with my nice, nice uh, golf ball. But I'm um, in my fancy... Um, red glass. I ended up returning all three of those. It was too cluttered back there, you guys. Uh-huh. I bought four glasses. I was just like, it's too much going on. Uh-huh. I just didn't like it. Uh-huh. But um, yeah, I'm wearing, a, uh, you'll understand when we introduce my next guest, um, our next guest, excuse me, uh, but uh, he, this is one of his favorite comic book characters because um, he wore a Superman outfit at the Comic Con. So it has a cape. Fabulous. Oh, look at that. Woo! Yeah. How did he go? Like this. He hands forward. He always did. I don't wonder why he didn't do out. Like I feel like this would make me feel freer than this. Like yeah. yeah. But right, I think right? for like aerodynamics, he's trying to go really fast. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm oh my god! Me. But but I always have like my, my mannequin Ramona. Um, <laughs> I have a store, uh, Lisa Marie Varen dot bigcartel.com that um, wow. Ella Jackson is in charge of. And so I sell, I'm selling everything I wear on Ga, on that, on that store. And this is a dress. Do you recognize the dress, Mickey? We wore it, um, the no. red carpet, 
on uh -huh. Essie's. And when we did a photo shoot, I was wearing this and you were wearing a black sparkly one. We and have so some we pictures from the photo shoot for that. We oh. do. I, yeah. yeah. Yes. yes. It's, and you can see it right now. Ah. <laughs> no, no, way. Ah. Ooh, ah. Oh my gosh, <laughs> that sun is like really glaring right now. Holy crap. Your Hold future's on. so bright. You got to wear shades or something. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but yes. That's it. Yes. Fabulous. Next, next. What are you wearing, Val? Next. What are you drinking? I was excited to wear this, because usually I'm like in like a robe or like pajamas, and I'm like, you know, it's episode, I think it's episode 30? Don't ask yeah. me to do math, or numbers, whatever. <laughs> the point is, after all of these episodes, I thought, I'm going to start kind of wearing some more of my, my favorite outfits and favorite accessories. This is a crazy Zara necklace that I love to wear my hair back with it because it's love so it. freaking huge. That's it makes nice. me feel very like art gallery. Like, oh yes, I've just yes. created this ex exhibition. Can I have random dream jobs that I probably will never get to do, but it's just fun. I love art. Anyway, and I'm drinking <laughs> a fabulous skinny lager from a can. Maybe mm -hmm. this is why I'm not going to have a fancy art career because I drink beer out of a can. But it's really good. It's a skinny mm -hmm. lager. I found it in the UK, lovely. But because of our guest, who you guys know by now is a wellness expert, I thought. Well, he's got to think I'm like really fit, right? So I'm going to put it in like a workout bottle, right? So then yeah. when he comes on the show, he'll be like, wow, she's so fit. And I'm going to be like, yeah, man. <laughs> but it's beer. But it's skinny. But it's, it's, it's skinny. Locale. Skinny. Yeah. Yes. locale for SoCal. Mickey, would you like to go next? <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised that you didn't have Alan bring your new bicycle upstairs in your, so you could just be pedaling. I should have. <laughs> A slow pedal, just because we don't want to blow up while we're on camera. No. Oh, no, never. absolutely not. No. No, dear. Just a little, maybe like a little dab. A little glow. hard at work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was yeah, going to say, I'm obsessed with, we. it's the British Bake Off over here, but Prue wears, have, do you watch the show? She wears the necklaces. You got to watch at least oh. see. I feel like her necklaces have gotten louder and louder with every episode. They're, I love like, that. I love a statement necklace. Yeah, it's great. Is she, so. Afri she African American with the, um like a kind of fro curly hair? No, she's a very oh. old like she's a elderly English lady that oh, is like a okay. bacon. And so before Prue, there was Mary Berry, which is like I know I, I, she's like a national treasure in the baking industry apparently over there. You have to be obsessed with the show like I am, and yeah. like I'm watching at this point, I'm watching the Christmas ones, like the the holiday specials of how oh. they did the holiday cakes and. Yeah. Bread and stuff. Yeah. Like thinking I'm like going to be a baker or something, but I'm not. Okay. <laughs> Back up career. I did make these Eminem Blondie bars last night, though. And can I tell you? Really? Amazing. Oh, amazing. Really? You want to see one? Do you yes. want to see one? Yes. yes. We're getting ready to bring on a fit. Babe, there's no protein in there except for the egg, maybe. I'll That's tell you what I'm wearing is my um, oh. Jimmy's Famous Seafood Company. I'm wearing workout clothes and these leggings. Oh, cute. Oh, cute. Yeah. Those are cute. Oh, are they, are they bell bottoms? Are they bell bottoms too? No, they're just fit leggings. So I can wear oh, them. Okay. I've worn these through the airport with a fun shirt, but I can also wear them to the gym to work out in. So I they love kind that. Because what if you need like a friend after the gym? I always thought that with workout clothes. Like if they look like super workout y, you're like, ah, eh, but if they're kind of nice, you can dress them up, throw a scarf on or something and be comfy. Yeah. But because so, a lot of people are like, they want to be comfy in the airport. I'm like, you can wear yoga pants and actually no one will know they're yoga pants if you just don't look like Have you're to lift weights. Yeah, maybe put a pair of little boots on instead of sneakers and yes. um, a fun or shirt or just like a cute like little over sweater or something. Thank you. Right. Can I just show you? The blonde. Oh, look at the. Oh, those oh. are so pretty. Oh, that's a good look. Slice too. Look at those clean cuts, you oh, know? Yeah. I'm sorry, wow. I should have sold it up on a plate. That would have been nicer. You know, yeah. that looks good. How yeah. badly do you want to take a bite? I had right to now, give though. some away. I gave a, I gave half of uh, most of them away because Donovan special requested these instead of cookies because I was gonna I was trying to figure out how to get rid of all the Halloween candy, you know, because we have like oh, yeah. so much. We had so many M and M's, so that's what I did last night. Yeah, it's perfection, it's delicious. And yeah. speaking of being healthy, I want to tell you guys about this over here. Do, can you see it? <gasps> yeah, yeah. Oh yes. Hold on, hold on, I can. Do you see who's who's guarding it? Little, little baby Nick. Short out. Action figures that Nick has. We, These are cello toys. You can go to Nick. Um, it's nickaldis.com. 
and you can get a signed action figure or you go to Chella Toys if you don't want it signed. If you just want the action figure, I suppose, but why wouldn't you want it signed? You look at these things. This is Donovan, so he can play with it. I'll tell you, those are my favorite action figures ever. Kind of like the retro style. I think they're so cool. Me too, me too. Yeah. Yeah. So, but also, if you don't notice that we have this legacy, this legacy sports nutrition here, which is LegacySups.com. And you can use code, code GAW for 10% discount. Just GAW, G-A-W, not G-A-W-T-V? Nope, just GAW. But okay. there's like this recovery. I've been using this. Yeah. Because this is mostly designed for men. I'll be honest. This is except for this as well as a pre-workout. Okay. Uh, but a lot of this, I know we have a lot of uh, men listeners and, and watchers of our show. So it's, it would be really great for them. But for the women, these are the two we're going to work on a female line. Well, but okay. The two that I would suggest this um, pre-workout if before you go to the workout, Val, I'll get you some of this. Oh yeah, please. Uh, before I'm you so get on that bicycle, bicycle. bicycle. <laughs> oh yeah. And we'll get this recovery PM is really great before you go to bed. It's like, it has melatonin, but it also has all the other, like all kinds of other stuff in there. That's perfect. Really, really great. That's awesome. And very apropos for this episode, LegacySups.com. We're going to get you guys fit and ready for the new year. And speaking of which, Lisa, we have a really, really exciting guest on, as you guys know. It's our wellness expert friend, Joey Thurman. But you guys have quite a history. We're going to show some clips really quickly of a little preview of Lisa and Joey and their fabulous, what she calls love-hate relationship. Take a look at this. What are we hitting right now, Lisa? My booty. Your (laughs) booty. Well, hard to drive. Uh, and she's coming up, she's exhaling up, that shortens up that abdomen, really contracting it maximally here. That's what those giant sets are about, the most efficient way to burn as many calories as possible and work the muscles. Yeah, a little less swing. Here we go, let's go three more. Up, drive. Excellent. The legs are working, the quads are working, the hamstring is working, she's breathing. Chuck Norris, eat your heart out. Quick, 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 quick. So Lisa, this guest of honor is a close personal friend of yours. Would you care to do an intro for us, a little virtual introduction? Absolutely. Um, he's an amazing trainer, um, a celebrity trainer. Um, he, it's a love-hate relationship. He used to train me in Chicago where I used to barf after every workout or in the middle of the workout. He kicked my butt, but I'm going to tell you, <laughs> I was in the best shape of my life. I was so shredded. Like he got me ready like in three weeks, like with abs mm. showing. I mean, that's. He is phenomenal, and it's not a long, wow. it's not an hour session. I mean, it's like he just gets it done, boom, 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 boom. Um, and he was known as the sexiest uh, personal trainer. I think, I don't know if it was GQ magazine or one of the magazines, but um, yeah, um, he's, um, a lot of people say he looks like Daniel Tosh. You'll see the resemblance, but- Tosh.0. Point point oh. That's it, Tosh.0. <laughs> point oh. And um, he, amazing man, amazing trainer. Um, follow him on his social media. He's gonna be plugging all that stuff in. And we have a lot of certain clips that he has been training me. And I was like his guinea pig on the news segments in Chicago as just demonstrating exercises um, for him. So um, yeah, well, welcome Joey Thurman. Joey Thurman, I gotta get ready. If he's a wellness expert, he knows that, you know, I'm super buff, so I gotta gotta impress him, hang on. Look at that little two pound weight. A 2.5. Oh, Joey, good to see you. My arm hurts because I did so many. Oh, yeah. Keep on going. I don't know if you heard me counting. I did over a thousand. Oh, here's my girl. Oh, my God. It's it's so embarrassing that you caught me during my workout. Joey Thurman, Uh, ladies and gentlemen. (laughs) I I see what you did there. I appreciate that. Thank you. I I I am wearing, um, I think it's your favorite uh, comic book character is Superman. Mm-hmm. Do you remember dressing as Superman at Wizard World or Comic Con? We did. Yeah, I, it, so it, it, I, I think it was Wizard World. Yeah, nice. It was Wizard World, so I bought. I got <laughs> my, my Superman outfit with the cape and my hat. Oh. Um, I'm, because, I'm glad to see so that we, you're you're still a super mess. I appreciate that. Yeah, I'm a super mess. Hashtag super mess. Oh my god, that's a hashtag right there. Oh my god. I love that, Joey. Welcome oh. to the show. So great to see you. How you been in this crazy uh, lockdown off and on that we've been experiencing? Oh, you know, some days I'm shitty, some days I'm wonderful, and some days I'm depressed. I mean, it is what it is, right? It is yeah. indeed. Well, that's you are a I wellness expert. Me. Lisa has been singing your praises, and we've seen some amazing clips of you guys working out. Tell us about you and your amazing brand. I mean, it, it's it's going so well. We're so impressed with your 
uh, the clips that we've seen. And of course your Instagram's blowing up. So yeah, very <laughs> impressed. Uh, well, I, I appreciate that. No, I've been in the health and fitness industry for, I don't know, since 2006, grew up playing sports, college hockey. These teeth are real. Yes, this nose is real. Uh, no plastic, plastic surgery. Yes. Yet. I don't know. Maybe it'll happen at some point. Um, <laughs> yeah, I yeah, know. I mean, I, I, I definitely do a lot of things and I, I've fallen a lot on my face and had to pick myself up and I've learned the most from that, but yeah, I've, I've worked with all sorts of people uh, in Chicago area. I was fortunate to be one of the go-to celebrity trainers. Lisa was one of the first actual like celebs that I trained and Terrence Howard, Oscar nominated, Wumi Musaku from Lovecraft Country from HBO. So I was getting phone calls all the time from all these people after that. My book came out, started doing local TV, which Lisa did a segment with me, uh, smacked her in the stomach when she was the champ. I've got a book. There's me shirtless a few wow. years ago with a much uh, better abs- tan. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the rest just kind of, they come and go as they please. You know? Yeah, no, yeah those, those, abs, those abs are absolutely real. They're, they're still there. That was, that was a week out from a fitness competition. And for anybody who's seen anybody in bodybuilding competition or fitness competition, they feel the worst when they're actually competing, but they look their best. So I was, wow. I was pretty beef jerky dry. Uh, at the time, but it was, it was a good photo. It was good lighting, some oil, some water. I was in a wetsuit, so it was a nice shot. It worked out um, for you. It's a great eight by 10. Absolutely. There's a hashtag, absolutely. That's just for you. Absolutely. Nice, there you go. That's, that's another good one. There. Very good. Yeah. And then you have a program coming up, Joey, that I'm yeah. gonna sign up. For. Yeah, so tell I'm, us about I'm, that. I'm doing a case study program. Um, so I'm not, I'm not allowing everybody in, uh, only about 50 people called Sculpt mm-hmm. System 90, where it's going to be 90 days where they work with me and I design a program specifically for them, um, eating plan, uh, a mental reps plan, because really, if you don't take care of your mindset first, and mm-hmm. I speak a lot about this, about my mental health problems and depression, if you don't take care of your mind first, the body is not going to follow. So you need to right. take care of that mind. So it's a 90 day program where I'll take applications. I'll get on the phone with people. It's not cheap but if you're willing to invest in yourself uh, it's gonna be about fifteen hundred dollars for three months uh, but I provide diet nutrition workout plan and it'll be with my own custom app with the same name sculpt system uh, which will be wow. out uh, any point now so that'll launch uh, I'll start taking phone calls with people um, end of December and that'll launch in January that's nice. so cool as, as someone who's very lazy with workouts and such I mean I mean again you did catch me right in the middle which is so ironic it's weird but, what is um, that three <laughs> three pounds what do you have there <laughs> I was like, this okay. is a 2.5, thank you. I mean, well, you I know what? If you, lift, if you lifted that 100 times, that'd be 250 pounds of volume. This there is why. Yeah. He's on my side, ladies. He's on my side. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I don't you. have the guns yet. They're more like water pistols, but we're, we're working mm-hmm. towards. Yeah. yeah. Boom. There, the microphone is covering it. There it is. Those swans are sick. Take them to the vet. But Joey, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you having an app. My husband says that all the time. He thinks it's hilarious. I like it. Uh, his dad jokes are rubbing off on me clearly. But uh, you having an app, I have to ask, because someone who is pretty lazy with working out, and I'm, I'm mm-hmm. such a social media app kind of a person, always on my phone, always on my computer. Apps are really popular with, popular with workouts. And are you, are you of the mindset that social media has helped you in, in your brand, or is it kind of hurting you? Oh, so I, I have a love-hate relationship. I did a whole TED Talk on this and I, I hate social media so much and I love it at the same time. And the first time I got Instagram was when I was training Lisa. She's like, you need to get on this Instagram thing. I'm like, oh God. Um, you know, I did, I started filming her a lot and then it started taking off from there, but I've got jobs from social media, but I've also lost jobs because of it. Because, you know, before your resume was who you've trained and your certifications and uh, anybody that can vouch for you and the celebrities that you've worked with. And now it's like, oh, they have 300,000 followers. They must be good. Where really, they, most of the time, these people have no idea what the hell they're talking about. And they've just right. got like a nice butt and abs picture. Like, awesome. Like anybody can work out shirtless where you don't know how to program. You don't know how to like what, what the body's doing or what or anything about nutrition. Like just because they look great does not mean they know what the hell they're talking about. At the same time, somebody could be 50 pounds overweight. I've worked with a lot of NFL trainers who look like shit, but they're the smartest people I've ever seen in my life as far as biomechanically speaking because they know how to implement that. You don't go, if you go to your doctor and they're overweight, like I don't want to listen to my doctor, they're your doctor. Right. So, they, 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 so, so that same principle can be applied for fitness professionals too. Yes, you should, you should 
walk the talk and all that sort of stuff. And you, and you should say, Hey, if you're not supposed to eat donuts in the morning for breakfast, your, your trainer shouldn't be doing that. But at the same time, if they have the background to back it up, you know, I'd, I'd much rather go with someone that knows what they're talking about over how they look. Now, if they look amazing and they know what they're talking about, then great. Right. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think social media to specifically answer your question, I think, I think it has hurt the, the fitness industry a ton and any, uh, any other industry. I think it caused a lot of uh, mental health issues and depression, anxiety and suicide rates are up, especially for young girls, which is directly correlated with when social media is available on phones, which is very scary. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, technology has helped us. Like we connect with people and I've connected with, with a lot of individuals through social media that I wouldn't have had the opportunity to connect with without it. So it's kind of one of those just like, I've, I've, I've got to have it, but I hate having it at the same time. Um, right. So it just, you know, there, there's a thing on Instagram now, I think where you can put in the amount of time that you should spend on there, which is interesting. I bet people will spend more time on Instagram now from having that, but it says like, if you spend an hour, it gives you some sort of notification. I haven't turned it on because I have to be on there quite a bit. Yeah. Um, but you know, people, how many times are you sitting and looking at the phone and then you look up and then the, the sky is dark. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, it's crazy what happens. So I always say that it's not the amount of followers that you have, but it's the, amount of, it's the followers that count, the people that are right. tangibly in your life. And with COVID, like, you know, like you ladies are connecting, you're doing this via, via Zoom and all that sort of stuff, which is amazing. So you're getting that connection, but just don't lose track of the people that are actually in your life who will be there for you. Like, oh yeah, I broke my arm in a hospital. Let me post a picture because I'll get all these fucking likes. Like, come on. Like you, you, you set up the camera because of that. Because yeah. you knew like, so that's the thing that it just really irks me. Like your, your, your kid's sick and you're sitting there making a collage of like, make them feel better. Like, okay, maybe yeah. later on when they're home or something like that, just, it's very strange to me. So I think we've really been desensitized with yeah. social media and then whatever your political stance is, you know, like it's, we're very desensitized now. I just think we just need to, we need to be more humans and realize like, let's stop being such assholes to each other and remember like what we have in common first, yeah. right? Like, yeah. I don't care who you voted for. If you're a good person, let's focus on that, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And then maybe I won't like you based off who you voted for. So, <laughs> uh, but, it, <laughs> so yeah, that was, that was a long answer, but hopefully I answered your question. No, I get it. Yeah. I think it's about yeah. being present as well. And not a lot of people, like I was at the Harry Potter, uh, Warner Brothers studio tour here in England today, and uh, which by the way, shout out to them. They did everything so safely and social distance and it was clean and amazing and great staff. But we, uh, we were walking through it and there were so many girls, young bloggers, and like, I do blogging, I do influencing, and everyone hates that word. Sure. But you know, I, I said to Alan, my husband, I said, I, I might take a few pictures today, but I wanna be, I wanna see everything. I wanna take it in. And bless them, there were these girls that were just walking ahead of us and they, they redid the perfect walk about six times with their yeah. friend filming oh. them. And I just thought, you're missing everything. Yeah. Around yeah. you, you know, it's, it's a magical, it wouldn't escape for reality, you know, and they just mm -hmm. couldn't, they wanted that perfect shot. Yeah. 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 We actually, we, we have a two and a half year old son. And if you looked at my Instagram, you wouldn't even know. We, we, we decided uh, not to put him on there. Mm -hmm. And originally when he was born, I'm like, Oh, I should, I should post him. I should do all this sort of stuff. And I talked about that in my Ted talk. I'm like, wait a minute. Is there, am I using him as a prop? you know, right. to get more followers and get more engagement and get product deals for baby stuff. Mm -hmm, and yeah. now it's like, I'm glad that my wife pushed back mm -hmm. on that and that we decided not to do that. I think there's three pictures of him on my social media and some back of his head, you yeah. know, just cause like we're, I'm so out there. And if anybody like, I would love, I love, I'm, I'm not knocking anybody that puts their kids out there. I love seeing my kid, my, my friend's kids on social media. It's amazing. I love seeing that. And that's how we connect. But it's funny. My family, I feel like they don't contact me as much or FaceTime or anything because they're so, so you seeing everybody else on Facebook and Instagram and that's how they can keep up. They don't realize, Hey, you can pick up the phone and call and check if you want to see how my son is. I just, we've, we've forgotten that. We just like scroll through a feed. Oh, like, you know, whatever. I saw this person's kid. I saw that, which is amazing to do, but we just get so lost in all this bullshit and like, just realize like, yeah, you know, to your point, Barry, like you, you're, they're missing out. I don't want to see the world through the screen. Yeah. I don't want to do that. Now, if there's moments like, oh, I wish I would have got that on film or something. Sure. But like, enjoy the memory that's up here. If you can get it on film, great. Set up a GoPro 24 hours a day and then like look at it later on if you, if you miss that. But yeah, I just, let's stop being assholes. That'd be great. Yeah. yeah. I will <laughs> what, say that. What a quote. 
Um, I, I have a five, I have six year old. I have a six year old, and for the longest time, I did all the shots. Like I'm, I was very like I've I've done pictures, obviously. So on my Instagram, if you go on my Instagram, you'll see yeah. him, and you'll be grown up in pictures. But he doesn't have his own account, or mm -hmm. and I've seen several people that make their children their own account. And I thought about it. I'm like, oh, I don't want anybody to take his name or anything like that because that does happen. Right. However, I'm going like, okay, well, then, but then I'm going to be posting as him. Of just his pictures like it is a nice thing but it's yep. just weird to then have like my fans follow my son just because yeah. he's my son that's yeah. odd so it's just kind of like i don't have any uh, public profile for him on anything either so i'm like and i've seen a lot of people and they have the children have so many followers and mm -hmm. it's it's yeah, creepy like, because uh, now you can literally follow exactly where i mean if you're if you're posting and tagging and all this sort of stuff and and yes you could go into like are we, are we reading into things? But like, if somebody is, let's just say doesn't have good intentions and everybody knows what that means. Like you could be like, Oh, they're at the park here. They live here. They go over there. You could easily like follow this individual. And that's just, it's that's just scary. really, really, really scary to me. So before you like, if you're, if you're going to post your kids, absolutely. Like that's wonderful. I love to see your cute kids, but maybe post and tag somewhere else or don't do a story. That's exactly where you are at that time. Say totally. that. It can I be post it later. Yeah. The next day. If, right. I, if I'm oh. at like the zoo, it's when I'm posting that I'm at the zoo, like there's yeah. a picture of the zoo, I'm not at the zoo anymore. Same. I, right. I do the same. I'm a little paranoid. Maybe I shouldn't be, but like no one's, I'm, I'm, for God's sake, no one's at the level of like extreme fame that say Kim Kardashian is, but she's posted about, people have said before in the news that like, oh, they accidentally said what hotel they were at, or they could see a logo behind them and they figured out oh. where they were and they yeah. were there at the time. So I say, and even just because on our own small scale, I'm a little freaked out that someone's going to know, but it's almost weird because when people in re our real life, as we call it, which I very much separate, they'll go, oh yeah, Val, you were in London recording something. And I'm like, I've been home all day. Like I'm literally in for, what are you talking about? Go, oh yeah, I posted on Instagram. I've told you, don't ever believe my Instagram. That was three weeks ago. Like, I'm not there. Yeah. Maybe that's yeah. too much paranoia. Like, I'd rather be yeah. safe than sorry. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Did you see the, the movie Social Dilemma, Joey? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I saw yeah. that. And it was late at night. I'm like, I'm gonna have nightmares because it was just, you know, and obviously you know, with every documentary, there, there, there are some angles, but you need to take that with a grain of salt. But for the most part, I mean, yeah, the, the Facebook like button was created to like, be like, oh, they like that picture. Yeah. And just, this created all this anxiety and social pressure. And it, it, it speaks volumes. I really suggest people watch that and just think like, just maybe take a step back before you decide, absolutely. you know, what to put yeah, on absolutely. there. It, and because it, it is forever, whatever you put on there, is absolutely you forever. It. You can't no, so it. it's not yeah. like back when I was a kid where you take a picture and you look at a photo and somebody would have to put it on the internet, but scan it, and there's much more effort. Now it's it's there. Yeah, yeah. And we, we have a rule. We have a rule in my house that um, there's no you're off the phone at five o'clock. Like Good. I'll leave it on just in case you know my dad's at an age sure. in his just in case I'll look and I go okay nothing's from my dad nothing's from my brothers or something like that but I no. You're off the phone. It's family time. Let's chill, um, watch some TV, have, you know, sit with the dogs, that kind of thing. I just, it annoys me. Like, like my biggest pet peeve is seeing people at dinner and they're on their social media when they should be chit chatting with each other. I hate yeah. that. It's just a, yeah. It but, can you overrun know. your life if, if you're not careful. Yeah. And, and with mm -hmm. Twitter, especially like there's a, a saying that's uh, say it, forget it, write it, regret it. And there are people that have done deep dives on people's Instagrams, whether they're running for office or they just happen to be some new starlet or they're in a movie, whatever. And stuff, like he said, like Joey said, there's there, it'll be there forever. Even yep. if you, oh, I took it down. There are people will screenshot it. Yep. it. It's a scary, scary world. So again, social media can be helpful or harmful, depending Absolutely. on how you, I think it's about balance, which you of course would probably agree with, with moderation in terms of social media, just like a diet or working out, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, for for the for the most part, nice segue, by the way. So, um, you, you, <laughs> I got gotcha. you. I'll pick up what you're laying down. So, yeah, I mean, I I think moderation as far as diet is concerned is kind of bullshit because you know that'd be like, um, can you moderate an alcoholic? Like, hey, you you can just you can have one shot. It's okay. Oh. No, nobody nobody would nobody would say it for that. Like, if you're somebody that just Yes, you should be able to have a piece of pizza every now and then or something. But if you have a piece of pizza and that turns into the entire pie and then a cake and ice cream, 
that is your drug. So no, you cannot have that food in moderation. I'm sorry if that sounds harsh. But most individuals who you know, have the mental fortitude to say, okay, I'm going to have that one piece of pizza. I'm not going to feel bad about it, but I'm not going to go and, and binge on it all day long and feel bad about myself. You just need to know yourself and how you handle those situations. So as a blanket statement, moderation for diet, no. Is a little movement better than no movement? Sure. But should you stress your body a little bit more saying yes should you stress your mind so you actually engage and create these new synapses and have that neuroplasticity absolutely but when things are hard people often don't do them mm -hmm. right exactly that's a good point yeah. Um, we also wanted to talk about your fad or future podcast and, and sort of some of the topics that you, that you talk about. I'm assuming it's a little different than our topics, which include <laughs> types of wine, when to drink them always, and things like that. So tell us about what your, your uh, podcast covers. Well, you just knocked it out. That's my whole podcast. It's just wine and drinking. <laughs> That's the, that's the whole thing. Um, okay, thanks for being on our show, Yeah, no, so, um, yeah, it's, I wanted to come up with a podcast, and I had a podcast deal from uh, Himalaya Podcast Networks, and now they, since, are just doing education, so they're not doing podcasts, but I still kept it going. So I wanted, a year and a half ago, pre-COVID, I, I wanted to try these things out, because people always have these world-class experts on, but they're just like, oh, I read your book, or I did this. I wanted to physically try them, and then at the end, the audience can decide, is this a fad or is this a future? So my first podcast episode was, I did ketamine therapy for my depression. Now, people aren't familiar with ketamine, it's special K, um, you know, or similar to like ayahuasca, where you have this out-of-body experience. So they blindfolded me. I was in a doctor's office. They gave me ketamine. I basically tripped my balls off for an hour and a half and went into this like um, dissociative state where my ego was outside of my body and you just really did this deep dive and like I woke up and I was crying and you really just get into your emotions so then I had the doctor come on and we spoke about that or I went plant-based for three months and got my blood work checked to see what people thought about that or I went carnivore so or I do some sort of workout program uh, I flew to Harvard to interview David Sinclair who wrote um, uh, the longevity book um, I can't, I can't remember the name of the damn book now. Sorry, David. Um, <laughs> lifespan. There you go. A uh, very good book. Like how you can live longer. And he thinks people could live to 150 years old. So I flew out there to interview them in person and then COVID happened. And I thought, well, okay, I can't do all this stuff in person anymore. So I took a break from it and then started doing it with zoom. So I'll have people right now. I'm doing a workout from Dr. Joel Seaman who trains all these NFL players. I did that for six weeks and tracked my progress. Um, and so I'm really the human guinea pig for most of these episodes. Every now and then I'll just have a nutritionist come on and we'll talk about nutritional science. But uh, for the most part, they decide at the end, is it a fad or is it a future? And make sure that you're not a fatty, F-A-D-D-Y, be a part of the future. <laughs> That's good. That's good. I remember like when I was training with Joey, I was like, oh my God, where'd you learn this, um, this exercise? He goes, I just made it up. Yeah. And I was like, just now? Just now? He goes, yeah, just now. I was like, yeah, I didn't so write I was it down. a human guinea pig. Let's see if this works. She was. She was. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, oh my God, Jesus. But, and that's why when you're speaking of love and hate, that we had a love and hate yeah. relationship too. That's okay. It's, it's, it's more, more hate for you, uh, you know, <laughs> in mind. But I complained yeah. the whole entire time. But that's the nice thing about training a high level athlete is because I know your body, I mean, you're doing backflips off the top rope. So I know you can handle a lot. So I can have you do some sort of asinine exercise that would be good for you functionally. Where if I'm not going to have the 50 year old woman that just needs to worry about walking to the grocery store and picking up like groceries. No, she's going to like do things like you're going to squat and you're going to hinge and you're going to and to figure out like how to not hurt yourself. But for you, and even though I work with athletes, it was really interesting just to try some crazy stuff to see what your body could do. And it also breaks up the monotony in your own workout too. We're not just like, mm -hmm. oh, deadlift, push, press, pull, whatever, which is all great. And we did all that, but then we sprinkled in some weird things or you drag me across the floor or I'd sit on the sled, whatever. Um, and and it's, it's really fun, fun to be able to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Like the yeah. fun stuff to break it up. I get bored in the gym. I still mm -hmm. get bored in the gym. I'm like, okay, what can I do that's different? I'm like, yeah. I even said, I thought recently, I'm like, I feel like I'm a bit gym sour. Like I don't need to go, like I, I need to do my cardio. I want to go and I, cause I don't want to go outside mm -hmm. and do cardio right now because it's cold. Yeah. So not a big fan, of that. <laughs> not a big fan of that. So I need to find an inside facility to do said cardio. Mm -hmm. However, but being in the gym, I'm a bit gym sour. Like I just don't feel like I want to just want to do something else, but still stay in shape. I don't want to not lose being in shape. I'm just bored in there. Like I feel like, okay, 
it's just the same routines you get in your like routines. It's hard to get out of those. And so it's nice to have someone to help push you when those yeah. times you don't want to do it, you know, because yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's I one of the best I things. Love, I love the being fit. I don't always love all the work that it, now it's more of a lifestyle. Like you said, it's not just, it's a lifestyle. It becomes your lifestyle. And I think that when people really struggle with it is because like you said, when they, if food is their thing or whatever is their thing, that becomes their thing. And it's just switching that to something else. Right. So that instead yep. when you, before you want to reach, cause I love sweets and I love we're foodies here. We talk mm -hmm. about food all the time. I, I love this food might too. be the only episode you guys that we don't like talk about absolute like mouthwatering food. And this, this show's nothing to do with food. We just always, everyone in the chat <laughs> is watching. Hi, sorry. Yeah. There won't be like too many discussions about that tonight. Shockingly. Yeah. You've heard of people being thirsty. We're just hungry. <laughs> thirsty. <laughs> Oh, um, but I just decided I'm not going to sit there and just not enjoy my food anymore. I don't want to eat rice and chicken and broccoli and pre-plan my meals. I just don't want to do that anymore. But I feel like I'm in better shape or like better healthily, healthy, yep. the whole, like holy in the sense of like, I feel better in a, in a whole kind of aspect, mentally, physically, the whole way through, because I, I still kind of am healthy but still enjoy my food and still push myself in the gym. But it's all those things, like you said, down the box and seeing like where you can kind of allow yourself certain things, but then make up for it in other places. Yeah. And for you, that that's a mental reprieve and that feels good. So you're changing it up. But now if you wanted to get on the cover of a magazine or something, you're going to dial it in and hit all that sort of stuff, right? Like you're right. going to do that. And that, that's, that's for, you know, a measurable amount of time, but people, you know, the misconception is you don't need to do all sort of muscle confusion crap, right? That's bullshit. Muscle confusion is not a thing. Okay. So should you change your workouts up every six or 12 weeks? Yeah, that, it's helpful for your body. But if you wanted to do the same workout every day and then throw in a new exercise to mentally stimulate your brain, like some sort of balance work, let's say you're doing power work or your, your standard like squats and, you know, deadlifts and presses, and you threw in some sort of one leg closed eyes balance work that can actually help stimulate your brain because you're doing something completely different and in turn that will help change your body. So think about what you're doing now. And what are you not doing? Just sprinkle that in there. You don't need to turn into a yogi if you don't like doing yoga, but maybe at the end of your strength training workout, you take five minutes, you go into a tree pose and close your eyes and just don't do anything, get off your phone and just breathe in and out of your nose. And then maybe the next time, like you start doing some diaphragmatic breathing, maybe the next time you do some sort of different stretch and that there is completely changing the stimuli. You still got what you want out of your meathead workout but then you're doing some, something else that can help your body, help your uh, system go from sympathetic, fight or flight, we're running from a tiger, whatever, to parasympathetic, rest, digest, recover, respond. And people often forget about that. One, we don't warm up enough and prime our body. Two, we don't cool down enough. You always like that you drop that weight, the last weight you did, and you try to choke down a protein shake. No, tell your body your workout is over, it's no longer stressful, and you're about to digest some food. Take five minutes, lay down, just breathe slowly in and out of your, in and out of your nose, close your right nostril and breathe out of your left nostril. That will trigger your body uh, and your vagus nerve to essentially just say, hey, I'm going to calm down now. That's all you need, just a few minutes, and that will change your life. And then when you're stressed throughout the day, you can do the same thing. Close your right nostril, breathe in and out through your nose, breathe through your stomach, two thirds through your th stomach. <sighs> one third up through your chest and then breathe in and out, just holding that right nostril. And that will change you right there. You're stressed out. You're yelling at your husband or wife, your kids, whatever, like just those few minutes that mental reprieve will kind of just set your system back. And I really feel like that's part of the issue. Now I'm working on a second book concept that I'm submitting in January, but like, I just really feel like people just overcomplicate things. And it's not about, it's not about like, you know, the moderation thing, but it's like, what is this bare minimum that we need to do to help our lives? And eventually we start sprinkling this in. We add one thing at a time, then you know, okay, this is actually what changed me. If you completely change your diet and you change your workout program and you, and you also need to feel better, okay, how do you know what the stimulus was? If you start like, okay, I added this one exercise, I added this one routine, I added this one thing I'm doing for the next couple of weeks. You're mm -hmm. like, oh, now I feel better. Okay, that worked. Now let's add something else. Yeah. Yeah. I find this stuff fascinating. Honestly, I even just yeah. hearing you talk, I, I find myself like motivated. I just bought a little exercise bike and the girls were so proud of me, but just starting off small to do some interesting things, but we don't want to keep you forever, but I have one sure. question that's been, that's been on my mind because we're at, uh, you know, we're in mid December now, 
we've got, uh, you know, the holidays coming up, everyone sort of, you know, loses track of things and everyone indulges, things like that. I would assume that January is a very busy time for you, for gyms, mm -hmm. things like that. Can you tell everyone right now why that's probably not the best idea to, you know, just go, oh, I'm going to be horrible. And then January, I'm going to fix everything. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, that, that's the thing. Like, you know, would you want to try to destroy a relationship first and then try to fix it later? Like, you're, you're going to have a harder time, right? You're, you're going you're gonna, to, you're like, wait a minute, what about last week you did this? Well, no, it's, it's January 1. We're going we're gonna to be good now. Like, why don't you start, right? I don't understand. Everybody waits till Monday or waits till January 1st, whatever. But I can't remember the stats. Like, by February 3rd, it was like 90, 95% of people like fall off their New Year's resolutions. Like, right. you absolutely need to start now. Like, that's what my, my program that I'm sorry, I want to start it before January 1 because I want people that are actually interested. I'll take them afterwards. You know, one, I like money. Two, I want to help people. But look, here, here's the thing. You absolutely just don't wait for your life to start. If you, if you want a new job, if you want to make yourself better and the whole bullshit, like I'm going to get up and be a little bit better every day. Sometimes we're not better, but it's a cumulative effort, right? Weight loss or adding muscle tissue is cumulative. Let's say 3,500 calorie deficit in a week to lose a pound. That's over the week. So one day you could have a little bit more, one day you could have a little bit less. And then, then where is it from there? So absolutely start right now because odds are you're going to fall off the bandwagon and you're going to fail, but be okay with failing. And that's where this culture has it wrong. Like you're not going to do everything perfect. You're not going to have the perfect diet. You're not going to start the workout part. If you have a new, new workout program, new job, new course, it's going to be hard. You're going to fail on your, you're going to fall on your face wipe the dirt off, like put some Neosporin on it, you'll be okay, all right? And then move on. So start, like, if, you're, if you're healing this right now, I'm like, oh, I should probably start tomorrow. Screw that. Start now. Is, is it walking? Is it getting up, you have your meal, and take a 10-minute walk? Is that 10 minutes more movement than you had yesterday? Great. Tomorrow, let's walk twice. You know, or let's walk for an extra minute. Let's walk a little bit faster right there. You know, and then all of a sudden you're at that 20 to 30 minutes of exercise a day, and you're dropping down your mortality rate just from walking. And if I could give one piece of advice for people, start walking, even in the cold, Mickey. So like, you know, <laughs> that's, you know, ha you know have, have, have your breakfast or how many meals you're eating a day, take a 10 minute walk and that'll help, that'll help, that'll help that digestion. Nice. Um, yeah. So start, start now and, and yeah. quit making. I, know, I do work up. out, Joey. Don't let them fool you. And I love yoga. I work uh, out. I, I know. I know you do. I'm just, I'm just, oh, day. oh, whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. They're going off. They're going off. Um, a yeah, there you go. Philly kicked me right here the other day. A little Philly? A little, <laughs> a little Philly? Baby. You got a little horseshoe mark? A little horseshoe. Hey, what was it? Um, Joey, try to get try. by. Oh. Do you remember that? <laughs> that is nice. You, know, and I know, that, you taught me that. Yeah, it's, you, 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 you got to ride the tricycle before the bicycle, or is it, um, what is it, buys for the guys or uh, curls for the girls? Yeah. Remember that. But ah. you're the one that said yeah, what, try to get by and get trapped. You're the one yep. that taught me that. Well, see, you know, <laughs> I, I forget things too. Maybe it's too many okay, concussions. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, this has been so informative, and honestly, I'm not even joking. I'm actually really excited to. Uh, I, I love the the advice about just getting out there and walking. We have a lot of our fans that actually write in about loving like workouts and and feeling motivated from the girls. So it's so nice to hear from a wellness expert. Again, JoeyThurman.com. All the information is there. Joey Thurman Fit on Instagram and Twitter. I will of course be following and uh, yeah, getting motivated and check out that. Absolutely, check that out. Ooh, look yeah. at that! Uh, look at that! Yeah. My, my ring light's too bright. But imagine, like, you guys, when I train with them, this, him training you, you feel like you can just run into the wall, and it, it just, you're so empowered. You yeah. know what I mean? You're, like, you think you can take on the world, because you leave, you're like, oh, man, man, yeah. I, am, Not this. I feel really good about myself. You know what I mean? You know, yeah. so, yeah, yeah, so, that, that's why I had him as a trainer every single day. <laughs> uh, I, I appreciate that. I needed, that's very I needed your encouragement and stuff like that. So, yeah, yeah. you are the best sexiest trainer was it national hey, was I, it I, it was, it was, it was on the cover of uh, a magazine in chicago it was like <laughs> it was like hottest trainers or some shit i don't know and i'm like oh, i guess i'll take the cover um the cover <laughs> of hottest trainers and some shit i love that magazine <laughs> <laughs>
Oh my god. Yeah, I don't think it. I don't think it's published anymore. Uh, it was a timeout. Chicago was the actual name. Of it. We might be able to Google it and show it off right here. But Joey, thank you so oh, much. Awesome. For being here for Joey, us and uh, we will all You're be the best. Yes, yeah, thank you for being here. Of course. Yes, Thanks for thank having you. me. Love you, uh, Joey. You're the best. My love I, to your family. I love you too. All right, back on you. Yay! Well, he was just amazing. Joey, thank you so much. That was awesome. What a superstar he is. Lisa, thank you so much for the introduction. Honestly, I, I wasn't just saying this because he was on the show. I actually feel motivated right now. Might go on my exercise bike after this. <laughs> <laughs> go get him, Tiger. Go get him. Keep up with your cup? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, there's still some beer left in here. You think he knew? No. Although I will say that throughout the episode, at one point I winked at you because I went like, I've just been casually sipping my wine and he just is not even questioning. So was I. And I forgot. And I was looking at you guys. I go, I don't think they're drinking their wine. Well, no. I, I, didn't what? What I was drinking, but I started drinking this one for you, Val. Really, I had this in mind for you when I opened it. Oh, last oh my God. That's Alan's the Winking Owl, my oh, favorite. Owl. It's, the I, it's this so time. good, isn't it? It's, it's, it's very inexpensive. It's so tasty. Yeah. yeah and honestly, we're, we're, we're kidding around about Joey. You know, obviously we're joking because he's so fit but he would never judge, you know. We, we just want to say thank you again to Lisa for introducing us to Joey thank Thurman. You, Ladies, we've got some really exciting things. We know we hate when the show ends, but coming up, we've got some really exciting guests and we're getting ready for the holidays. Expect lots of themes. Expect some really cool things on patreon.com slash gawtv that we're cooking up for all of you guys. But ladies, it's been a fun Wednesday, hasn't it? Oh, it has. So fun. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm so hydrated. Yes. <laughs> you feel hydrated? I do. I like I do. a coffee and a sangria. Perfect. Oh my goodness, that's a bad belly. <laughs> or is it a dinner of champions? Stay tuned. Okay, Ladies and gentlemen. Champions. <laughs> Thank you for being here, everybody. We love you so much. Thank you to Joey. And of course, make sure that you like this video. Make sure that you are subscribed to our channel and click that bell icon to enable notifications. We will see you next week. More holiday cheer is coming your way, so don't miss an episode. See you next time. Cheers. 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 <laughs> This is the word to go, yo, yo.